Hello, and welcome to this enrichment gathering. And thank you for taking the time to spend with us this evening. The goal of these gatherings is to inform you about the Venture Forward campaign in our world and on our way. Over the next few weeks, you will be hearing about many of the activities associated with the campaign. The prayer vigil is already scheduled for mid-April. Several youth events, including a lock-in and art day, are scheduled in early May. An all-church dinner and youth event is scheduled on May 18th. That will be a special evening and we'll hope everyone can come. Now the focus of this video is to not only show you how you can help, but also to review some of the past giving experiences and some of the outreach activities that we currently have at St. Paul. So some of the past uh, challenges and campaigns that we've faced have been the organ installation and also the elevator and foyer entrance projects, both of which were highly successful. The campaign focus is about community outreach, youth and family faith formation, and perhaps most importantly, the facility and grounds repairs and maintenance so that we can preserve this beautiful facility that we've been given. Now, all of the things that we are focusing on are based on the Always Reformed, Always Reforming, or ARAR process that we recently completed. And so you'll be hearing a lot about those efforts during this campaign. So relax, enjoy your fellow members, listen to and ask questions about what you're hearing tonight. Your input, your input is very important. And again, thank you for being with us this evening. In 1999, we learned that the pipe organ from Christ Episcopal Church, just down the street from us, was being sold. And the music committee at St. Paul was interested in purchasing it because we were using an electronic organ that had been here for many years and was not going to last much longer. So we contacted the church, we, we put in a bid and it was accepted. Uh, and then we started fundraising to cover the cost of the removal, the renovation, and the installation here at St. Paul. At the same time we were uh, doing the organ project, we also were doing the, uh, the handicapped access project. And both projects were very successful and done simultaneously. Well, as you can see, I'm now out at the parking lot, and uh, if you take a look over my shoulder, you can see one of the issues we have with the parking lot, the fact that it is very uneven, and if we do get snow or even rain uh, in the colder weather, uh, it pools and freezes, and it really causes a danger to anyone using our lot, and obviously that includes our congregation and our outreach, and if we have a wedding or a funeral, and we've really put a band-aid on this parking lot uh, for many years. Behind me, you can see the stained glass windows. This is another area of concern. The plexiglass that has protected these windows for quite a few years have really outlived their usefulness. They've become fogged. Uh, they're, and the problem is they have allowed heat to be established between themselves and the stained glass windows and the windows have now in fact many of them begun to bow because of the heat. Well we all know what an heirloom we have in stained glass windows. Um, many of them brought or maybe all of them brought from the old church so we certainly want to protect those windows or they're in essence irreplaceable. As you can see I'm in the sanctuary and I'm here to talk now about leaks in the roof and the fact that the roofs are a priority that need to be taken care of. We have both slate roof issues in the sanctuary here. We've even had uh, rain and water coming in on the bell tables and we have four or five other areas in the sanctuary that do have and have had some issues especially when we get any heavy rain or heavy snow that piles up on the roof. Welcome to the quilt room. This is where the Pieces Be With You quilt group, a ministry here at St. Paul, operates. Perhaps you've seen some of our quilts. We do baptismal quilts and graduation quilts. We work and make confirmation stoles, comfort quilts. 
We also do quilts that go out locally, um, charitable quilts to Freedom House in Detroit. We work with um, Lutheran World Relief quilts that go out all over the world. This year we sent, this past year, we sent quilts to California to help those that were still recovering from the uh, effects from the fires out there. We have been around for about 18 years now and we are looking to be able to expand our uh, facilities here to become a greater maybe resource, perhaps resource within the church to the community. We want to be able to offer classes to our youth, to offer facilities, having per, uh, groups or senior citizens come in. Um, we have so much wealth of energy in our quilters here. We are hoping also to have um, to purchase a long arm quilting machine that it does the finishing of the quilts. Many of our quilters send their quilts out and pay to have the quilting done. Those that comes out of the funds that we use to, to support other um, quilting efforts. Um, the long arm quilter would be an item that we could use um, for teaching. It also kind of supports us historically Lutheran churches with quilt groups would do hand quilting for the community to raise funds. It would be something that we could do also. We look forward to being able to do greater things here with Pieces Be With You. Passing on the faith has been critical for congregations that are vibrant. Having strategies, staff, and people around to find creative and essential ways so that the faith continues on from one generation to the next has been the active part of the church. We're proposing a minister of faith and outreach. So for this new position, we're encouraging this congregation to combine a sense of outreach, an outwardly focused congregational mission with faith formation. And we want to put together a position that finds a candidate that both builds up faith, helps us learn about God and understand the power of grace through Jesus Christ, but to not just understand it, but to put it in action in service and love in our community. I would like to just take a moment and speak from my own heart as pastor of this congregation on why I think that this campaign is imperative and why I think the venture forward aspect of this speaks directly to the mission and vision of where we're looking to go with this campaign. A major part of the campaign is a lot of deferred maintenance. Over the years, this congregation has valued its outreach and its staff. This congregation has one of the strongest uh, donation histories to our synod and our churchwide, to things beyond these walls, may it be in Jordan or the Holy Land. This congregation has been thinking outside of its box for a long time. Our building is continued to be in need. And this is the time in which we've needed to ask to deal with some of the issues of our building. And it is at the heart of our congregation so sometimes it's hard to think that, this, that we need to be continually looking outwardly focused, and I believe in that. But we also need a reason to be here, on this corner in Gross Point Farms, and in this building who hosts hundreds of people, either coming here to escape their, their addictions or to escape sin through worship and to be in fellowship with one another. And so this... This bricks and mortar part of this capital campaign is imperative to being a congregation here and now, to provide for a space, a safe place, a hospitable place, in which the gospel of Jesus Christ may be proclaimed through these doors, to be a place in this, in this community that comes to re forgive sins, to resurrect our body, to walk out of, and to be motivated for ministry. I believe that we need new funds to do those things. I believe that this capital campaign will venture forward to fix some of those needs, to refresh our interiors, our bathrooms, and our hallways, 
and to provide for our roofs and our windows. I believe that's imperative for our immediate future. And the thinking beyond the immediate future in between these walls, the other, well, general half of our campaign is trying to equip people outside of our walls to provide for ministry staff that both build us up in faith, but makes us think outside of ourselves and reach out into the community. To provide quilts both for kids and young people and those who are in need or sick here in our community, but worldwide as we mail them. Because that is a, that's how the church has always functioned. We gather. We gather in a place. We gather in a building that needs basic upkeep. But we gather to have these things so that we may be sent out. So that we may change the world in gospel and in the good news of Jesus Christ. And that ebb of flow of coming into community and going out in community is a Christian formation that I value deeply. And this is why I think it's important, imperative, to venture forward together in this campaign to keep the roofs over us solid so that we may be sent out in ministry and in love.